Hello and welcome to Voices of Vic. This is a special podcast. It's an Emmanuel Dennis special. He's back. He has returned back to Watford on loan for the remainder of the season from Nottingham Forest. He has joined and taken a 70% pay cut to rejoin the Hornets and there's also no loan fee involved. Um, so this is going to be a little bit different from what we normally do. We're now going to go to everyone who's associated with the Voices of Vic and we're all going to give our opinions on Emmanuel Dennis. And we also want you to get involved too. So let us know in the comments below what's your opinion on Emmanuel Dennis returning to Vicarage Road. Um, I, for one, believe it's going to be an interesting end to the season. So Emmanuel Dennis back at the Vic after... Two seasons away from Vicarage Road. Uh, we obviously loved him in the Premier League. Uh, he got 10 goals for us. He was one of the shining stars, really, in that really turgid season, uh, which ended in relegation for the Hornets. But yeah, um, Emmanuel Dennis back. We've been after a striker, haven't we? Look, Mileta Rajevic has come into the club and it's not gone quite as well as we would have hoped. You know, don't get me wrong, he scored nine goals in all competitions, but... His perhaps all-round game isn't what we would have expected from him. Uh, vacuum bio, um, he tries and tries and tries, but finishing-wise isn't there. We've really been after a sort of statement striker and, and someone who's um, a bit of a household name. And to get someone back that knows the club and looks as if he really enjoyed his time at Watford. You know, there's a few rumours knocking about that he potentially was a bit of a bad egg and... That article from that paper, which we won't name, um, they said that the dressing room openly celebrated when he left. Um, I think there's since been articles from more credible news sources to say that that's rubbish, but we won't get into that. That's a different kind of worms that somebody else can open and explore. Um, but look, you know, the, the, the main thing is, I don't, I firmly believe that if he was a destructive person and he was someone that dressing rooms didn't get on with, then Val just wouldn't sign him. Because it looks like we've sorted that side of things out um, be, behind the scenes and with dressing room, etc. But I'm delighted, you know, 10 goals in the Premier League. He was clearly a very talented player. Didn't quite work out for him at Nottingham Forest. Don't quite think it worked out for his loan spell in Turkey as well. But do you know what? He knows the club. It's a, It's sort of a lower league to what he's been operating at the last couple of seasons. And who knows? As Ben said in the intro, it's going to be a, it's, it's really going to be exciting last few months in the championship. And could this be what propels us and enter through the back door of the playoffs? Because this could be a statement signing to the rest of the league. And I'm really excited to see what happens with Emmanuel Dennis. And, um, and hopefully, it's all announced today, which today is Wednesday. And hopefully we see him in a Watford shirt again at the Vic on Sunday at two o'clock against Southampton in the FA Cup. But I'm absolutely buzzing. I cannot wait to see Emmanuel Dennis back in a Watford shirt. Bring it on. Bring on the goals. Bring on the fun. Bring on the chaos. Bring on the nutmegs. But yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. Come on, you horns. So Emmanuel Dennis is coming back to Vicarage Road on loan for the rest of the season to help the Golden Boys push for promotion. Honestly, this signing has really taken me by surprise. I never in a million years thought he would ever come back. I thought when he left, there was like bad blood. Obviously we got relegated, like you don't want to be in a team that's relegated. The fact that he's now pushing to be back um, obviously makes me so happy that he wants to be here. He obviously wants to help the team. He's taken a 70% wage cut. That is just like something that I've never really seen a player do for the, for, especially for Watford. Um, I honestly think that he was such a key player and such a strong player. He honestly was exciting to watch. He was energetic. He was creative. He was scoring goals. We know that he's proven himself in the Premier League with us. So I have no doubt that he'll be able to prove himself in the Championship. I think this says to other teams in the Championship, you better watch out. Um, I think this is honestly a really positive. I don't really see how this can be seen as something that's negative. 
Uh, we know that Val takes his squad very seriously. He's not going to let things go if he doesn't agree with them. Um, and I honestly think that that is such a key, like, thing for a manager to have. I'm really happy that he wants Dennis. And if Val wants Dennis, then I want Dennis. Um, I really think that this is a big thing for all Watford fans. Um, and I think it's really going to help us as we go on to the season and hopefully push for promotion. So, yeah, my thoughts on Emmanuel Dennis, um, I'm actually really excited by it. Um, I haven't been this excited by a sign-in since, I, I don't know. Um, it's been an awful long time. Um, and we, we we got to remember that Emmanuel Dennis was part of the worst Watford side that we've actually seen in history. Um, that two seasons ago when we was in the Premier League and we went through three managers. And if anything... That first part of the season, that first five months, Emmanuel Dennis was absolutely outstanding. Outstanding. Um, he was the one popping up with the goals, with the assists, um, with the nutmegs. Um, and he was just phenomenal. But then, obviously, after the AFCON situation, it kind of tailed off a little bit. But I'm not going to put it all down to AFCON, because we got to remember... The timing round AFCON and the situation, we actually had a managerial changes again with Ranieri coming in and um, a, a managerial change where Hodson came in. So it wasn't just all down to Emmanuel Dennis. There was a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And so I, I don't want any blame really to lay onto the head of Emmanuel Dennis. It's all been well popularised before that he's had issues at other clubs. He might have had issues with Watford, but... From what I'm seeing at the moment, for him to take a 70% pay cut, he's the one who's been working behind the scenes, actually trying to push this move. He's been in contact with Tom Cleverley. I believe that he's been quite instrumental in getting Dennis back to the club. That shows to me that he really wants to be here. And that fits into everything we've seen from the summer with that fans forum where Scott Duxbury said that we want players that actually want to be here. And this is the case for Emmanuel Dennis. Look, he's had a tough, difficult spell away from Watford since he got that £20 million move to Nottingham Forest. He's, um, I think he scored two goals for them and then he was left out of a 25-man squad in January. Um, so it was a difficult year for him and obviously they had a massive upheaval of so many players through the door. It was ridiculous. And then this season, he's been shipped out on loan to Turkey. He's, I think he's featured eight games. So it's not gone well since he left Vicarage Road. So I think in these instances, players want to go back to... Well, not go back to, but they want to feel comfortable, don't they, in their surroundings. And him coming back to Watford will certainly do that for him. He knows the fans appreciate him. He knows he can... He, he can work his magic at Vicarage Road. Look, he scored 10 goals in the Premier League, so he's definitely going to be able to contribute in that essence in the Championship. And if we're looking at the transfer window Watford's had already, we've shipped out Reese Healy, got £2 million for him. We're bringing in Emmanuel Dennis as like a replacement. That's a massive upgrade. And, and to think he'll be competing with Mileta Rajevic, Vacuum Bio, again, upgrades on both of those. He's a box office signing and yes, maybe risk comes with it, but I think it's a low risk transfer. He's he's obviously came in on a 70% pay cut. He There's no loan fee involved. I think this is a really shrewd bit of business by Gino Pozzo and it's a box office signing as well. He's going to get bums off seats and I think it's going to be a really interesting end of the season. Um and I'm really excited now, really excited. I think he could, if he can turn it on and we see that first five months of the season that we saw on his first year here, I think he could be the difference whether we get into the playoffs or not. You might be aware that I've not been a Watford supporter for very long. I've only been supporting the club since 2018, I think it is. So my, my catalogue of, of heroes isn't as long as most people, you know, even... In recent years, before I started supporting, you've got your Alman Abdi's, Mate Vidras, Odi Nagalos. Well, for me, I've got Etienne Capou, Gerard Delafeu, Jao Pedro, and Emmanuel Dennis. The guy is one of my favourites ever to do it for us. I mean, that 21 22 season, 
was absolutely miserable. But imagine what it would have been without the flair that he gave us. I mean, he was just fantastic that year. And I've been feeling really nostalgic about Emmanuel Dennis since we got this news. Hence, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the, the shirt of that season and I, um, I've been wearing the other kits from that season last couple of days. Um, yeah, I've just been, I've been feeling nostalgic about this one. I think it's the most excited I've been for a signing for, well, maybe ever. I mean, Saar comes to mind in, um, in 2018, 2019, but yeah, th this is a real statement of intent, isn't it? We're, you can tell we're, we're getting him on loan, not just because we want someone to fill the gap until the summer, but because we want to push for playoffs now. And <clears throat> what better way of doing that than getting one of the best strikers you could get at this level. So yeah, what, what I really like about him, what he gives us, we know about his speed. We know about his hard work. We, um, <clears throat> we know he's got a bit of trickery to him. And obviously he contributed heavily to that, that, no <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that nutmeg record that we got all those years ago. And, um, yeah, but what I really like is his composure in front of goal. I mean, that, um, that goal at Everton away, he, he sort of, he shaped up to shoot and then he, he just put it onto his other foot and stuck it away, you know, like it, like it was nothing. He made it look easy. And we all know about that, that goal at Leicester away where again, he shapes up to shoot. He just pauses and, and he lifts it over the keeper. So. Yeah, we are getting an incredibly composed player in front of goal. And you look at the likes of Vakum Bayo, you look at Mileta Rajevic, you look at Yasser Espria, they are far from that. They they panic in front of goal. And yeah, so it's nice to have that, that cool head in there. But another thing about him is we're getting a versatile player here. We're getting someone who can play on either wing. But where I like him best is uh, actually where he played under Claudio Ranieri, which is... I think where he probably got most of his goal contributions, really, and that was uh, down the middle as a central striker. I mean, what Ranieri did, he obviously had a, a fluid interchanging front three, but he, for the most part, pushed Josh King out to the left and played Emmanuel Dennis down the middle. And I thought that was so effective because he can he can hold the ball up, he can come short, and I mean, that's something we need, but... He can, he can make runs in behind down the channels and it just worked to a T. And I think one player is going to benefit from this more than any other. And that's Yasser Espria. I mean, the, the balls he plays in behind, he should probably be on about 10 assists already this season, if not more. But he hasn't had that runner and that cool head in front of goal to, to finish it off for him. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited about this one. There's obviously one drawback you can flag up. And, uh, and that's the attitude problems that, um, may or may not be true. Obviously, we don't know from the outside looking in. And I mean, the only thing with any indication of attitude problems is an article by the sun that a lot of people seem to have taken as gospel. Now, for me personally, I don't think we would be signing him if he did have attitude problems. But again, maybe they think it's just such a good place to play football now. Even if he can be a bit of a problem, he'll, he'll, he'll thrive and he'll be all the better for it. So yeah, look, I, I think it's low risk. It's a six month loan. There's no option to buy, but I, I want to see, I want to see what he can do. I want to see, you know, can he tear up the level? Can he get maybe like eight, nine goals before the end of the season? And can he push us into playoffs? So yeah, I'm, um, I'm very excited about this one. So, as we saw last night, um, the fantastic news that Emmanuel Dennis is returning to Watford on loan. Um, I think a, a great bit of business uh, for Watford. Um, the fact that he's not only taken a 70% um, pay cut in his wages to come, which I think is you know, fantastic, shows that he, he wants to play football, he wants to be somewhere where he loves, um, somewhere where he's loved, obviously, uh, from his time previously um, at Watford. We all loved him. We all know what he can do with the ball. Um, obviously, 10 goals, 6 assists. Um, and I think, I do believe it's something around 36 nutmegs, which was the highest in Europe that season in the Premier League. Um, so we, we know what he's about. He's a skillful player. He's a positive player. Um, whenever he's got the ball, 
Um, he looks to drive forward. Um, I, I think um, I think he's going to bring an awful lot to this side between now and the end of the season. Um, it, it probably is now going to be the difference between us making the playoffs and, and not now. I think with, with him in the side, I think we've got a very, very good chance of making that top six. I think he's... Uh, yeah, I think the fact, obviously, we've we've heard um, that Tom Cleverley um, was instrumental in him coming back to the club as well. So he's clearly still got contact with uh, with people in the club. So yeah, I think with the discipline that Val's brought to the side um, this season, um, I think uh, yeah, he'll, he'll only be a positive signing. So. Can't wait to see him back in a in a Watford shirt on hopefully Sunday for the Southampton game, um, and then uh, yeah, let's hope he brings plenty of goals between now and the end of the season. So that's our opinions on Emmanuel Dennis. Would love to hear yours too. So get involved in the comments below. Are you a little bit concerned by the return of Dennis, or are you excited? Let us all know down below. Um, if you like this video as well, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And we'll be back soon with a new video and a new podcast. All I will say now is Hornets fans, it's going to be an interesting end to the season. So make sure you strap yourselves in. Come on, you ones.